I have another low carb ketogenic meal I want to share with you today. And this is one you would enjoy even if you're not on a low carb diet. Bacon fried cabbage. If you're interested, keep watching. So the recipe, it couldn't be any easier. Bacon and cabbage, and that's all there is to it. I have four slices of bacon all chopped up here that I'll be putting in my frying pan uh, in a moment's time. And once it is pretty much fried, then I'll just be throwing in the cabbage that I have and frying it up with some spices. And that's really all there is to it. But let's just talk a little bit more about the cabbage because this is something that most people probably don't choose to use a lot of and because there's well it can smell in cooking you know if you had boiled dinners growing up like I did the house smelled all day from the cabbage and there's a reason for that and it's also one of the things that makes this most interesting most people think of cabbage as somehow related to lettuce they think of these iceberg lettuce you might get in, in a store and how much nutrition can be in that that's just for salads right to fill up the salad bowl actually cabbage couldn't be any different cabbage is more closely related it to cauliflower and broccoli. It's in the same family and has the same health benefits. It's one of the best vegetables that you can have on a ketogenic or a low carb diet. It has a whole lot of nutrition that I won't go into at this point. It has a whole lot of fiber and is very low carb considering its volume. So in this bag I chopped up this morning is about a cup and a half of cabbage. I think that's what I measured it out to be, which I think is going to be plenty for this meal. And I'll put the breakdown of the macros in the video description underneath. And in here, I think I already mentioned four slices of bacon all chopped up and ready to go. What spices you choose to use is entirely up to you. I'm going to use a lot of garlic, add a little bit of salt, and probably some Cajun seasons. That's what I'm going to use. All right, the next thing to do is I have a fire building up, actually a charcoal fire, and I'll explain why in a minute. And when that is nice and hot, I'll get the fry pan on and we'll get to cooking. So the stove I'm using to cook my lunch today is the Pico Grill 239, the larger of the two smallest stoves put out by Pico Grill. And I did a preview video uh, quite some time ago, and if you're interested, I'll put a link at the end of this video to that. And today I'm using it with charcoal because uh, uh, we're under a fire ban already, even though it's only late April. The weather here has been such that the woods are dry and beautiful weather, but it just means that we can't have open fires. But I can still have charcoal, which is a nice thing that we have here in Nova Scotia. And this is producing a whole lot of heat, a whole lot of heat. Look at that. As soon as I put my fry pan on top, you can see the heat being transferred through. So I'm going to have to keep this bacon moving because it may actually be more heat than I want or need for this. Okay, so I guess with the only thing to do now is I have to pay close attention to what I'm doing is when I'm ready to put the cabbage in the pan, that's when I'll bring it back. All right, my bacon is crisping up, not completely cooked. Ouch, spattering though, a lot of heat, a lot of heat. But I think it's good time now to add the cabbage. So the point was uh, to cook the bacon first to give the cabbage something to cook in. Inside of the fat. Oh, that's a lot in this plan. So I am hoping this will fry down some. I'll wilt down with the heat. Move that around. All right, again, not much to see. As the cabbage fries up, there was one other vegetable or one other item I could have included in this, and it was as much for flavor as anything else, and that was an onion. In fact, I had intended on bringing an onion and didn't realize I'd forgotten it until I got out here. Again, not essential, but it did, would have added flavor. And if I had brought the onion, I would have started the bacon, got it well underway, added the onion, fried that until it was translucent, and then added the cabbage and eventually the spices. But as you can see, it's starting to fry up. It just takes a little bit of time. Now, I'm not sure if I will, but I could put my pie plate that I use as a, an eating dish on top of this to kind of help cook it, wilt it down a little bit. But there is so much heat coming up from the bottom on this stove that I doubt very much I'm gonna do that. So I'll bring it back, I think when it's pretty much ready to go. 
So it's only been about five minutes or so since I put the cabbage in. It doesn't take very long, but I want it to get a little bit more crispy and uh, fried around the edges than it is yet. But I think this is a good time to add uh, some spices. So to make up for the fact that I forgot the onion, a little bit extra garlic. Maybe a little bit more. Garlic is one of those things, I don't know, either you like it or you don't. If you like it, there's no such thing as too much. My Cajun spices. And I think maybe just a little bit of salt. Salt tends to draw water out of vegetables like cabbage, but uh, that's okay. In fact, some of the recipes I saw suggested that you put the cabbage in a bowl, cover it in salt, leave it for half an hour to see if it'll draw any water out. Because if you can draw some of the water out, it'll fry up a little crisper, a little quicker. But I don't think that's an issue today with this. So if you're interested as I work on this lunch, I'll just mention that the Pico Grill 239 that I'm using to cook my lunch with I'm also be doing a separate video on using it with charcoal. So it's kind of a two in one. If I haven't mentioned that already, I will put a link to that demonstration video at the end of this one, if you're interested. But I'll tell you, for use with charcoal, I don't have too many stoves that work this well. Let's have a look at the charcoal. Woo, man, the heat under there. All right. This is starting to slow down a little bit because some of the uh, serious amount of heat is starting to work its way down or starting to slow down a little bit, which is all good. And I think what I will do is put the pie plate on top just to kind of contain some of the heat and have it cook up a little quicker. So it's not going to be long now and this will be ready. And then I'll bring it back for the taste test. I'm going to quick gander at what my lunch is today. This is all cooked up. Yes, there is some crispiness. I don't think it's going to taste burnt. There was a lot of heat in that stove. Man, there was a lot of heat. Could have did a little bit better at managing that. But it looks good, smells good, but the proof is in the taste. So let's do that. Get out, flies. Get out. Go away. My meal. At least they're not biting flies. Still too early in the, in the uh, spring yet for the biting flies. All right, let's see. Bacon and cabbage. You know, um, I think what a lot of people object to with cabbage is the smell. Once it's cooked, that sulfury smell doesn't seem to be there anymore. It's gone and uh, it's not in the taste. It would have been just in the air. So when you're cooking outdoor, you really don't get that sulfury smell that often comes with cabbage or broccoli or cauliflower for that matter. I'm certainly not getting any of that now. What I am getting is the crispiness and the smokiness of the bacon combined with the spices on top of the cabbage. Some of the cabbage has crisp, some of it is soft. It, it's just a nice combination. Now, I will admit, some of it is a little crispy. There are some pieces of the cabbage, the finer pieces of the cabbage that get a little crispier than I would have liked, like this one. Yeah, that was a little crisp but not so bad that I couldn't work around. That's just what happens when you're cooking in the woods, a little bit of not only trial and error, it doesn't matter. You can be very experienced. I like to consider myself to having some experience cooking in the woods. It can still happen to you. So you just have to be careful and keep your eye on it. And that is one of the challenges I have. It's not just the cooking. Why are these flies around? They like my meal. It's not just the cooking, but I'm also trying to record it so that you can see what it is I'm cooking. So that adds to some of the challenge of cooking in the woods. The parts that aren't crispied are spot on good. So simple a meal. I am missing the onion though. I've done it before with onion at home. And the onion does add a nice flavor and texture to it as well. 
Don't forget the onion. That's the lesson here. Okay, great meal. So easy to make. So healthy if you're on a ketogenic diet. So tasty you can't afford not to have it if you're not on a ketogenic diet. Just cabbage, bacon, had I remembered the onion, and some spices. Cook it up over a fire and enjoy. It's just that simple. So as I mentioned, I'll be putting all the information for this in the video description below. One thing I'll say right now is I measured out about a cup and a half of cabbage. It came out to exactly eight ounces on my scales at home. Um, I think I would put a little less cabbage in this, maybe just a full cup or just over a cup. I think it still would have been plenty. I've got a big plate full of food here. It did shrink down with the cooking, but still maybe just a little bit less cabbage. Although if I have to share it with these flies, it may not be enough for me. Okay. I'll put all the information. Please, if you have any comments on this meal or anything else that I've done out in the woods or any meals you'd like me to try out here in the woods, please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore. Take that path, let's travel, because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.